which you know to be true to follow the world who doesn't care anything about him? Are you caught in the vice grip between certain folk that are in your family that call themselves Christians and you know that they're living in total debauchery right now but you're in a halt between two positions. My friends, you have got to walk in his ways. Uh, verse C of uh, verse 12 says, also by loving him as God. If you do not love him as a Lord, your God, you love him as some cosmic killjoy that's going to provide salvation for you one day when you die. You're hoping but you have no proof at all. See, listen, I don't worry about what my state is going to be when I die. I know exactly what's going to happen to me when I die. I'm going to go directly to heaven. I'm going to be ushered directly into his presence. That is the way it is. That is the way it always will be. And I love God for that. I also see in the fourth part of this verse, and finally, that by serving him, we are to serve him for how long? All the days of our lives. In other words, you as a Christian are not to be in godly reverential fear on Sunday, but you're to be that way tomorrow, all of your lives, next week, next month, next year, married, single, have money, don't have any money, white, black, Asian, Latino, whatever you are, don't have a clean suit to put on, don't have a dirty dress to slip into. You will fear him. You will walk magnificently before him in all of your ways. I don't care what happens in your life. You're going to demonstrate that reverential fear because you know him as your creator. He saved you from the foundation of the world. You didn't have to do anything about it but say yes to his divine call in your life. He's given you eternal life, a place in heaven throughout eternity forever and ever and ever and ever and he's calling you to fear him for the rest of your lives and all we do is sacrifice an hour on Sunday morning and live like hell all week long. Friends, you're going to be in for the biggest surprise of your death. You notice I didn't say of your life. You're going to be in the biggest surprise of your death. You're going to die and he's going to say, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I wanted reverential fear on Monday when I wanted you to speak for me. I wanted you to live before me on Tuesday like you never lived before. I wanted you to look that booger right in the eye and tell him, you know you are wrong from the very pit of hell, but you wouldn't do it. And yet, you're trying to show reverential fear when you come to God's house. And some idiots might even try to fear me. And all I'm trying to do is get in contact with the master myself. Men need to undertake an active fear of their creator. Stay in Deuteronomy. Go to chapter 13, verse 4. Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verse 4. We need to show some active disposition in fear towards our creator. And this is what the writer writes. He says, you shall follow the Lord your God and fear him. You shall keep his commandments, listen to his voice, serve him, and cling to him. Boy, I love this because walking after him is the note of the four things. Number one, keeping. Oh, you will keep his commandments. If you fear him, you're going to keep his commandments. Secondly, obeying. Obeying in every precept, every law, every restriction in your lives, you will do it. If you're a believer, you don't pick the ones you want to do and pick the ones you don't want to do. And the third thing is serving. There's not enough serving in our church. We want to be served. In other words, entertain me. No, God has saved you to entertain his majesty to a dying world. And fourthly, by cleaving, holding to him, depending upon him, relying upon him, trusting in him. That is what reverential fear is. I cling to God as he clings to me. I relish in the salvation that he's given me because I've had a personal relationship with him. With him. Think of one that is married, loves his bride, or she loves her groom. She is constantly clinging to him. I love you. I want to be with you. I relish in my association with you. That's exactly how Christianity is. But unfortunately, we do not see people living that way because we have an other God kind of mentality. We do not reverentially fear him. So this verse in Deuteronomy 10, 12, it specifically points out our obligation to consider God as worthy. We have an obligation to consider God as worthy. Therefore, we become what worthy? Unworthy. Amen. Let's come on down to the second point. We say the first point, God himself desires that his creation, that is man, fears him. Secondly, God himself always provides a man with the choice to do. Now, now, don't get confused. Don't, don't, listen, don't, 
those of no, 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 because I know, I know what's happening now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean God gives me choice? No, I didn't say that. He provides a choice for you to reverentially fear him. Now listen, those of you that are believers, I sincerely believe that you had no choice in coming to Christ. When he presented his life and himself before you, and you understood what the word of God demanded, and you embraced it deep down in your heart, you had no choice. God calls you, it tells me in the book of Ephesians, from the very foundation of the world. I'm not going to get into that. Some of you in this room think that you raised your hand one day and came down the aisle, and that was your choice. Well, I'm going to tell you, who gave you the muscles to put your hand up? <laughs> Why did you put your hand up? What is your hand responding up to? And did you place that intent substance in your heart to cause your hand to go up? Now, if those of you came and joined the church and took the pastor's hand and you think that that taking of that man's hand gave you salvation, you are out of your ever-loving minds because as soon as your hand went down, nothing happened. But if where you live and where you reside, Christ was speaking to your dear little heart, amen. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. That's where we are. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and listen to his voice and not rebel against the command of the Lord, then both you and also the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God. In other words, this verse begins with the preposition if. Now I want you believers to really key in on that and I want you that are viewing to key in if. Because if you're not, none of this applies to you. If you're not, you're a hypocrite where you sit, in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you are. You're not real. You've been playing Christianity for years. That's why we're doing this. We've been playing church if it says.